Hi guys. So today we're going to look at factoring again. Um, so we're going to review the stuff we've already done so far this year with factoring and then look at two new things for factoring. So the first step whenever it comes to factoring, always, 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 is to take your GCF. That will always be your first step for many reasons. Uh, for one, that might be your only step. Uh, two, if you don't take it at the beginning, you probably won't remember to do it at the end, and you won't be fully factored. And three, it may be hard to recognize some of the special cases that we're going to look at today without first taking out that GCF. So your first step always is to take your GCF. After you've taken your GCF, we consider basically how many terms are in our equation. Remember, terms is what's being added or subtracted. So if we have two terms, some things that we can look for, if we know the square root of both terms and there's a minus in the middle, then that's going to create a difference of squares. And this is something we've seen a lot this year, and hopefully by now you guys can recognize this pretty quickly. So again, that's when we know the square root of both terms, there's minus in the middle. That factors into the square root plus the other square root, and the square root minus the other square root. So that's one you guys have seen a lot so far this year. What's new, though, is what we're going to do if we know the sum or difference of the cubes. So something like in the form of a cubed plus b cubed. So something like that is also going to be able to factor. Now, I'll tell you right now, this does not factor into a plus b cubed. Okay, it's not that easy. Um, the way it's going to factor, it's going to factor into a binomial and a trinomial. So the binomial is just the cube roots of both. It's just a plus b. Then the trinomial, I'm going to go ahead and write the formula, and then I'm going to show you guys a little acronym that might make this a little bit easier. So the trinomial is a squared minus ab plus b squared. And that's our formula for the sum of cubes. So the acronym to help us remember it, it's called SCUMS. And I'm going to make the U small, because the U doesn't really help us find anything in here. It's just easier to remember SCUMS than it is to remember SCMS. So S stands for square the first. So everything we do is based off of this first binomial. So the SCUMS helps us figure out how to get this trinomial from the binomial. So S stands for square the first. So we squared A. C stands for change the sign. M stands for multiply, and S stands for square the last. So we're going to have to go through this again, but we'll look at it with the difference of cubes formula. So again, we start with a binomial that's just the cube root of both terms. Then we're going to follow the SCUMS acronym. So I'm going to square the first. Well, the first is A, so A squared. Then I'm going to change the sign. It was minus, so change it to plus. Then I'm going to multiply. So a times b is ab, and then I square the last, which is b squared. And those are our sum and difference of cubes formula. So unlike squares, squares had to be minus. Cubes can be either plus or minus. All right, now three terms. This is everything you've seen so far this year. Okay, if a is equal to run one, remember those are the easy questions. We need to get them done fast. If a is not equal to one, that's when we have some extra work. We need to split up the middle and we need to do grouping. And then perfect squares is a special case that if you recognize it, you can save yourself a lot of time. So a perfect square trinomial is in the form of square double square, like we've talked about. So it's something in the form of a squared, either plus or minus. It's double, so it's 2ab, and it's squaring the last. So that's what a perfect square trinomial looks like. So that is something like a plus b squared. That's how it factors. Again, that is different from the difference of squares. Okay? That is just a binomial squared as opposed to a difference of squares. All right, so then four terms is another one that's going to be kind of new today. But if you've been using this split the middle and grouping method, it really isn't that different. Four terms, we're just going to use grouping. And it's going to be very similar to the method we've used for three terms so far when a is not equal to 1. All right, so we're going to start with some two-term questions. So the first one should be one that we can factor quickly already. There's two terms. We know the square root of both. The square root of 49x squared is 7x. The square root of 64 is 8. So this factors into 7x minus 8 and 7x plus 8, and we are done. 
Number two, on the other hand, we don't know the square root, but we do know the cube root of both of those terms. So we're going to start with the binomial. I just cube root both the first part and the last part. To get the trinomial, this is where I follow the SCUMS acronym. So I square the first, change the sign, multiply, and square the last. And that's how I get my trinomial. So square the first, which is x, change the sign, multiply, so 5 times x, and square the last, which is squaring 5. All right, 3 is a good example of why we have to take our GCF first. This is a difference of cubes, but it's hard to see right now because we don't know the cube root of 54, and we don't know the cube root of 2. But if I take out that GCF, I do know the cube root of both of those terms. So again, starting with the binomial, I just take the cube roots. Then I'm going to square the first, change the sign, multiply, and square the last. Number four, so there's three terms here. If you want to do this the same method where you do 9 times 4, you figure out what multiplies to 36, you split up the middle, you do your grouping, that will work and you will still get your correct answer here. But this is a case where if we can recognize that this is a perfect square trinomial, because again, it's in the form of that square, double, and square, then we can get this one done a lot faster. The, Q, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 4 is 2. If I multiply those and double, then I'm going to get that 12 in the middle. So this is going to become 3x minus 2 squared. So again, if you can recognize those perfect square trinomials, it's going to save you guys a lot of time. All right, so the next couple, uh, the first one really is just a review of, again, what we've been doing all along. So if you feel comfortable, pause the video, try this one, because it's something we've been doing all year. Okay, so three terms, a is greater than 1, so multiply your a times your c. I'm looking for something that multiplies to a negative 90 and adds to 1. Well, those two numbers are 10 and negative 9. Even though my variables are different, that's okay, but I'm going to keep those variables consistent throughout the problem. So this is going to be 6x squared plus 10xy minus 9xy minus 15y squared. So I've kept all the variables the same. I've just changed that middle term into these two new terms. So now I'm going to move on and do my grouping. So out of these first two terms, 2x can come out. That leaves me with 3x plus 5y. Then I go to my next two terms, minus 3y comes out, and that leaves me with 3x plus 5y. My parentheses match, so that's my first factor. Everything that's not in the parentheses is my second factor. All right, moving on to 6. That is also a difference of cubes because the first term, I know the cube root. It's C plus D. The second term, I know the cube root. It's 3. So then, to get the trinomial, I'm going to square the first. Well, in this case, the first is C plus D. Then I'm going to change the sign, multiply, and square the last. So this one's, it looks a little bit different. Now, if you want to foil this out and multiply this out, you can. We're just focused on the factoring right now, so I'm not really going to get into that step. Um, but again, that's just what this one would look like, even though it's a little bit of a different one there. All right, then moving on to 7. This is one you guys have seen so far this year. Um, this is a difference of squares. So this factors into x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 4. x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. x plus 2, x minus 2. But x squared plus 4 does not factor any farther. So then at this point, that is as far as I can go. All right, so now when we get to number 8, we're talking about four-term four, four term factoring. These are actually pretty simple, as long as you've been using the same method we did on number 5. Basically, what we're going to do for number 8 is the exact same thing we did on this step in number 5. It's like it just gives you the first step already done for you. You don't need to figure out what those two middle numbers are. So these are actually easier than three terms. So again, we look at the first two terms, and we take out what's common. That's 4x squared. That leaves me with x minus 2. Then I go to the next two. 
I take out what's common, which is going to be that minus 9. That leaves me with x minus 2. Parentheses match. Everything that's not in the parentheses is 4x squared minus 9. The only problem is we're not done, though. Okay, again, this is why we've got to be familiar with difference of squares. 4x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares. That factors into 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 3. Again, if you feel comfortable, pause the video, try number 9. All right, so out of these first two terms, we're going to do grouping again. x cubed comes out. I'm left with x squared minus 4. Out of the next two terms, minus 1 comes out. I'm left with x squared minus 4. So x squared minus 4 is the first set of parentheses that matches. x cubed minus 1 is what's left over that's not in the parentheses. x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. Factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. x cubed minus 1 is a difference of cubes. So I take the cube root of both. To get the trinomial, I follow that SCUMS acronym. Square the first, change the sign, multiply, and square the last. The last one is probably the hardest one on there because it's kind of tricky. If you try your normal grouping like you're used to doing, it's not going to work. So we actually have to group this one kind of a special way. We are actually going to group the first three terms together. And this is a case where it's really helpful to know what our perfect square trinomials are. Because x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is a perfect square trinomial. That factors into x plus y squared. Well, I still have minus z squared on here. So now I have two terms. Both are squared, and I know the square root. So this is going to be a difference of squares. So x plus y plus z is one term, and x plus y minus z is the other. Again, this one, it's really kind of tricky, just it's hard to see that you're going to do this step. Um, more of the four terms you're going to see are going to be a lot more like 8 and 9. All right, so the last one that we're going to look at, um, this is really leading into what we're going to get into next class. So what this one tells us, if you look at just the polynomial that's given, that's not something we can factor. So we're going to have to use a different method that we have not used so far this year. So it tells you the first zero. It tells you that 2 is a zero. Well, if 2 is a zero of that polynomial, then x minus 2 is going to be a factor of that polynomial. In order to figure out what the other zeros are, though, I'm going to use synthetic division. Because if 2 is a 0, if I do synthetic division with this polynomial, don't forget your 0, placeholder, I should get 0 as a remainder. So let's go ahead and do that synthetic division. And I do. So I get 0 as a remainder. That's further proof that 2 is a 0 and x minus 2 is a factor. Well, the reason we did division is because now look at the polynomial that you have left over. So again, we start one degree less than the original. Well, my original was cubed, so my coefficients for my answer, this would be x squared plus 2x minus 3. That's a regular quadratic that we can just go ahead and factor. That factors into x plus 3 and x minus 1. But again, remember, because we already did that synthetic division and we got a, a remainder of 0, x minus 2 is also a factor of that polynomial. So that whole polynomial factors into these three binomials. And without using that synthetic division process, there's no way we would have gotten this otherwise. Now what's going to be new next class is we're going to figure out what we do when we're not given this starting number. And that's the new thing we're going to look at next class.